Hello you beautiful intrigued people, my name is Gold Kigo and welcome back to another video. Now I am extremely excited today because I have finally done it. I have finished World Fabricator, yay! It only took me like a month to do but it is finally finished. Now if you don't know what World Fabricator is, basically it's this add-on that I've been working on for the last month or so. And it basically brings a lot of the features from World Edit for the Java edition of the game to good old Bedrock edition. Yeah, it, it was quite ambitious to do, but I am pretty proud of how it turned out. So in this little video, I'll just be showing you like how it works and some basic tips on how to use it. But pretty much most of the things or the techniques that can be used on World Edit can be used on this add-on as well. Now, if you have seen that short little demonstration video that I posted a while back, you would not believe that it is the same thing that I'm about to show you. I completely went back to the drawing board and reinvented the whole thing. Now, th this was especially difficult to do since I stumbled upon onto a couple of problems. So obviously I play on Windows 10 on a computer, so typing commands as well as dropping items is quite easy for me to do. But on console, there you could also drop items quite easily, but typing out commands take a bit longer. And then obviously on the mobile edition of the game on Android and iOS, you can easily type commands once again, but dropping items just take forever. So instead of trying to copy the system that was on World Edit, I decided to come up with my very own. And I think this is actually a lot better and a lot easier to work with. So basically what I did was, I'll show you in a minute, but I copied the technique that they use on servers to do the little shops with the chest thing as a way to create the brushes as opposed to like randomly typing out function names in your command or in your, um, what do you call this thing even? The, the, this thing, the, the chat and commands tab or whatever you want to call it. But without further ado, let's get into the demonstration. Okay, so to start out, you want to type one single command and that's going to be function setup. Now this will give you these four custom items that you will be using to create your huge terrains. We have brush, new brush, edit brush and delete brush. Okay, so obviously we want to start painting and create our huge terrain. So we're going to use new brush. Now the way that you use these four items is basically the same as eating any sort of food. So if you're on a keyboard, right click, if you're using a controller, Click whatever button you use there and on a mobile you just simply hold the screen for that little ring to pop up. But as you can see when we eat this thing we will get the shulker box and this is what I talked about earlier when I said I used a chest system. So if we open up the shulker box you can see we have four options over here. Bold, Paint, Textured Paint and eraser. Now I'll go through each one of these in a minute but we're going to start out with bold. What you want to do to apply this is to drop this item. So if you're on mobile you can simply just drag and drop it out there or if you're using a controller or keyboard just just hover over the icon and press your drop key. Now as soon as you drop that item the menu will change and you can see that we now can pick between a sphere, a cylinder and a cube. Now we're going to go for a natural design and the very good tip that I picked up from a YouTuber called Jerocraft is to use this sand type technique that I will show you. So we're going to pick the sphere and now we should pick a size. Now something that is a bit of a shame is if you pick the sand or the gravel and pick a large diameter size, then the game tends to become a little bit laggy even though your hardware isn't like limited at all. So I end up using like 20% of my CPU and GPU, but the game still lags. So that's a bit of a shame. But if you're using non-gravity blocks to build, then the big brushes work absolutely fine. But because it can be a bit laggy and I'm recording, I'm going to go for a diameter of 7. 
Now over here we can pick what what thing we want to build with. Now like I said we're going to be building with sand. So once you've done that we can move away and as you can see the box will automatically disappear. Now you want to pick up your brush item and then get yourself in the air to start building. This little white thing that you can see floating in front of me is the cursor. So that is where you will start to build. To build it is quite simple just like the other items you basically just want to eat your brush. So as you can see when we do that we will start placing in balls of sand just like this. Now I don't really know what I'm going to build but I'm just going to kind of go around here and splat a few things just all around like here and uh, something that I didn't mention is you can hold in to place a bunch of things in succession but as you can see over there you could see that the game starts to lag when there is a lot of falling blocks. Now one problem when building with sand is as you can see behind me there is a lot of items that like just form items because the sand gets destroyed. But fear not, I've actually coded something into the program that will automatically get rid of those items when you build. So don't worry, those things won't really bother you. Okay, so I quickly built this little cliff face as you can see in front of me. And now we can move on to the edit brush tool. Now, when we eat this item, we will get a orange shulker box. And when we open it up, you can see that we can pick between a shape and a size. Now, this will actually edit your current brush that you have made. So, what I want to do, instead of having a sphere, as you can see, we currently have a sphere tool. We want to instead have a cylinder. So, what I'm going to do is to pick the cylinder tool and also make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so now that we have this... We can just simply go in and smooth out the terrain just a little bit like this. Okay, so like I said, the terrain seemed a bit too jagged in my opinion. So just by placing or by using the sphere tool here and there, I can make the terrain a whole lot smoother. So just smooth out some places over there. That looks a bit strange. I'm just going to smooth out this. Place a few more spheres like that. Just fill in that hole and yeah I think this looks decent enough okay now personally I think this little shape here looks sort of weird so I could go in and destroy it with my fist but what's the fun in that so instead we're going to use the eraser tool so what you want to do is click new brush open it up and hit eraser pick a shape I'm going to go for the cylinder once again and a pretty small one will do will work for me so i'm going to pick a diameter of three and now when we go here you can see we can use the eraser tool to kind of get a bit more detail even further and you can also use the edit um, brush on this as well to change it its size and shape so let's say we want to have a cube instead we can get a cube just like that. Now, if you're wondering what this delete brush does, um, it's basically just a way to remove this little cursor thingy. Since when you hit the new brush, we will automatically delete the old brush. But let's say you're done with your project and you want to take a screenshot, then you obviously don't want the cursor in the middle of your screen. So if we click on delete brush, you can see that we just get rid of that thing over there. Okay, but now that we have this cool little terrain here, we can finally start to paint. Now the way that we are going to do that is by hitting new brush, opening the shulker box, and you know what I feel like? I think we're going to start with a textured paint. Now the textured paint is quite cool. Basically you'll see in a minute it paints the terrain in a, with a low texture or random pattern so that you can detail your thing without taking for absolute ever to manually place in different blocks. Okay so we're going to pick texture and we're going to pick the diameter of 9 and I think for our detail block we're going to use andesite. So now that we have that we have our little painting tool. Now, if you go and paint it directly, it won't work. And the reason for that 
is you basically need to create a mask before starting to paint. The way that we create a new mask is by hitting edit and opening the shulker box and hitting the mask tool. Now, whichever blocks you pick here, um, the paint tool will be able to paint over it. So as you can see, we have a lot of sand and we want to paint over the sand. So we're going to pick sand here and now we have the sand as our mask. And when we go to paint, now you can see we can paint just fine. So as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, we get this cool random little pattern when we paint just because we have the textured brush. So I'm just going to go here and paint a few places here and there for some more detail on the flatter areas and we can move on to the normal brush. Okay, very cool, we now have our low texture. Now we can pick a new brush, pick paint, and we're going to go for again for a diameter of nine and pick normal stone. Now, once again, you can't paint directly, you have to create a mask. And this is where the mask tool comes in very handy, since obviously we don't want to replace the andesite that we already added, we just want to replace the sand. So if we hit edit, and open it up and hit sand once again, you can see that we will not replace the andesite, we will just replace the sand. So you can just paint your terrain like this, just fly around the whole area and paint it and it will not remove the andesite at all. Okay, now we have our cliff face all painted and textured, but it's a little bit gray, so let's get some greenery in there. So once again, we're going to use the textured paint and I think a brush of five will work for us. And I think we're going to use green wool as our brush. So we want to create a new mask. And this time we're going to be picking both stone and andesite. So if we just pick mask, we can delete andesite and stone. And now we will paint over both of those. Now I once again have the textured brush. So we will get the school little pattern when we paint with it. And we're going to use a second and maybe a third color to just fall in the other areas, just like we did with the cliff face. Yeah, I think this touch of greenery really helped it out. Now I'm just going to grab an another paintbrush and we're going to be painting in some dirt just because the grass on its own looks a bit strange in my opinion. But we're going to create a mask. And this time we're going to mask lime terracotta, green wool, stone, and andesite. So now we can pretty much replace all of the things that we have painted in the past. So I'm just going to paint a few pieces of dirt here and there, just like this. Just so that the grass seems to fade into the stone rather than just appearing out of absolutely nowhere. Very nice. Now, I sort of accidentally created this little pathway here, so I think it will be pretty cool if we can create a bit of a river flowing through our little scene over here. So, I'm going to create a new eraser brush, a cylinder and a pretty small one at that. Now, I'm just going to go in here and delete some terrain here to, um, to create a little bit of a like valley for our water to flow through. Now for the fun part, placing in the water. So new brush, paint or no build. And I think probably the cylinder tool will work the best here, a pretty small one. And I'm going to grab diamond just so that I can see what's going on a bit clearer and just start painting in from here or building rather. Okay, now that that's all done, we're going to create a new paintbrush and we're prop let's go for a nice and big one. We're going to grab some cyan stained glass. Now you can use water, but in my opinion, the glass makes for a better th um, looking water than the actual water. It's pretty ironic, but we're going to mask um, the um, diamond as you can see, and we have replaced all of that. Now, if you want to, you can once again use the textured brush to just go in and apply a bit more detail to it. But if you don't want to, you don't need to. And no, I did not mean to create a new brush. I think this looks pretty nice. All that we need now is some trees. Now, you can use, you can use the um, brushes to create some trees. 
But in my opinion, it still works better when you're just building them by hand. So we're going to go ahead and delete that brush and just manually build up some trees over here. Now I am by far not the best builder here, so you're going to have to excuse the way that I build. But yeah, this is just a little demonstration of how to use the tool. Now a brush that might actually come in handy is if we pick a new build brush, a sphere, a small one, and then the oak leaves, then we can probably paint in some leaves over here. And I, th I think, yeah, th this looks pretty nice. Now the brush won't actually delete any blocks, the build brush, just the paint brush will so we still get our little like um what do you call those branches yeah branches so i went ahead and added two more trees using the same technique and i have to say i think that really tied this boat together Now, like I said, I'm far from the best builder out there, but yeah, this was just a little demonstration of how you could potentially use this thing. And I'm sure some of you people out there will do this a lot better than me. Oh yeah, and it also works fine with Cinematron, so if you want to record yourself building, or maybe just do a little bit of a review of your build, you can use Cinematron alongside with it. Now, if you don't know what Cinematron is, it's basically this replay type mod that I created like two or three weeks ago. So yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like and to subscribe if you are new around here. And as always, there will be a download link in the description for this little add-on. So you can download it from there if you want to. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to help you out. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I will see all of you again in the future with a brand new video. Cheers!